Buffett collection that I'll uh, cherish forever. So, uh, Mr. Mike, the floor is yours, sir. Okay, bud. Well, thank you uh, very much. Let's see. You've got your uh, listeners tuned in and probably would like to know a little about uh, SOG. And what I thought I would do, because I have kind of a historical bent, I wanted to take a moment and sketch out where all of these things came from. Uh, I was always interested in the gray-haired SF soldiers that had taught us, mentored us, led us, because uh, they were such a source of information. And I would ask them things like, why are we here? Or how did this program come to be? And they had lived through a whole bunch of things. Uh, basically, if you go back to World War II, uh, usually the official history of special forces tends to be traced to or, or ascribed to the Joint American-Canadian First Special Services Force in World War II. And there's some certainly justification for that. But really, the heart and soul of SF is traceable to a program called OSS in World War II, the Office of Strategic Services. And at the end of World War II, that tremendously successful uh, unconventional war program uh, that was done in the Pacific and the European campaigns, it was then just basically thrown out because the U.S. does have a record of getting rid of what's been working well. It had to be reactivated in the Korean War in the early 1950s. And basically what was happening around the end of the Korean War, a decision was made in Washington to split the group that had come out of OSS into two different organizations. And this would be the genesis of, on the one hand, the CIA, and on the other hand, the U.S. Army Special Forces. The two programs then had separated. And for the first time, we had the CIA, and we had formalized the uh, Army Special Forces. And it helps uh, to understand from that point on, the special forces had adopted the unconventional warfare role for the military. And not everyone would be necessarily familiar with UW or unconventional warfare. With conventional warfare, the idea is taking and holding ground, uh, particularly strategic ground. But traditionally, militaries have wanted to hold ground especially the high ground. But in unconventional warfare, you're concerned with making war on your enemies without particularly taking and holding the ground. And so that is what Special Forces was um, designed to do. It was made up for uh, unconventional warfare, what later came to be called Special Warfare. And the next thing to understand about special forces, to ever really grasp what it is and what it does and always did, there's a concept called force multiplication. And that goes to the absolute heart of special forces, because what you're doing there is you're taking a smaller number of American unconventional warfare specialists, and you're letting them recruit and train and equip and lead in combat operations for nationals. And that way you get a terrific amount of bang for your buck. And that is what separates special forces from all of the other units that we example, there are many, um, what most people think that special forces was for and was about is what you call direct action. This is just hard strikes, kind of commando type raids. And that certainly is a major part of what special forces does. But there are many fine units that can do direct action. Uh, examples would be the Rangers, an outstanding group. Uh, Marines are uh, very fine uh, direct action troops, and you just use them as integral units to attack and destroy things uh, and such. But in special forces, the emphasis is almost always on raising foreign nationals under American leadership, training, etc. And where this came into uh, its own, and it was a brilliant program, as Vietnam took off, you had the 5th Special Forces Group, and it built up 
uh, at first it was units from the first group on Okinawa, and they also had units from the seventh group, and there were a couple other groups that had kicked in units. Uh, the first Oka teams from the first group Okinawa were initially called snakebite teams. And early on, snakebite teams from Okinawa had uh, some key parts to play. Later, the fifth group was just activated for Vietnam, and it did the Vietnam War. And the most that it ever had for American SF personnel 